Today's liturgy is for Edward Adams Sr. Please be sure that your cell phones are silenced or turned off. Resurrection. 
Christian with pure hearts and clear consciences, with all the children of your holy church, we glorify and thank you and your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever.
sweet fragrance of our incense and make us worthy to announce your resurrection with the angels, to proclaim it with your women disciples, and to rejoice in it with your pure apostles. We raise glory to you and to your Father and to your Holy Spirit forever. nor 
the human heart conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. something, 
If they don't do it, it wasn't done. So what would have happened does not take place. So when we're not open to God's love, then we're probably going to have a hard, difficult time trying to figure out how God is loving us when actually we have our own roadblock up. We are not listening to what he has to say. The Maronite prayers were very beautiful. As I was reading it and trying to also think of Memorial Day weekend at the same time when we honor the military, when we honor those who have given up their lives for freedom, the link that I saw was that our prayer service and true service is a rescue mission. And God runs a rescue mission all the time. But he never takes away our free will. That we always have the freedom to reject it and to handle everything in the wrong manner, to be destructive, to take what doesn't belong to us. When it comes to war, someone wants land and people that doesn't belong to them. Most of the time motivated by greed. But at the highest level, and when it's most important, and sometimes you're forced into it, is to do the rescue. The prayers tell us who is being rescued. The troubled, the widow, the orphan, the one that's wandering away, the one that feels broken inside, The last verse of the scripture is, do not let your hearts be troubled. And I think most of us would say that we don't want to be troubled. We don't say, gosh, I want to go out there and I want somebody to cause me all the trouble I could possibly ever imagine. And we don't look for situations so somebody can put fear in our heart. So what is he talking about? Do not let your hearts be troubled. Who would do that? Well, we do it all the time. We do let our hearts be troubled. I'm not talking about the minor annoyances of life. There's no escape. I try. Can't do it. Life can be annoying. But there are troubles. And what are we going to do? How do we get rescued? Well, at the beginning of the Gospel, he talked about commandments and to keep them. And it's all motivated by love. Not a mediocre emotion and feeling that's gone within a couple days. We've all had the experience of someone begging for something and they promise everything that they'll never wish for anything ever again. They get it. And tomorrow they want something else. Because we have this hunger inside us. The command of that he gives to us is something that is supposed to free us. And he has to tell us to do it. Because many times our emotions and our feelings want us to carry the grudge. When we tell the story, we want to make sure that we are clearly the victim and the other person is the one who caused all of it. Now that might be true sometimes. But as we grow up, as we gain in maturity, as we get corrected by our parents and society around us, retrain, reprogrammed in a healthy way to know the boundaries of love, we are less apt to make those same mistakes over and over and over again. They say the definition of insanity is trying to keep trying to do the same thing over and over again when you know it doesn't work. Or you believe so hard that you want it to work, you refuse to accept reality. We've all done this. How many people have put up with a situation in life that is very abusive or very demeaning or humiliating? And we put up with it because we don't have and are not in touch with the dignity and the sanctity of our own life. Somewhere along the line, there are times when we feel unworthy of being
being treated with respect, or fearful, or we're troubled and we don't know how to get out of it. And I return to the mission of Jesus Christ. He is trying to rescue me, and He is trying to rescue you. You know, every so often you have people come up to you and, or to myself and say, are you safe? You know, and I want to say, safe from what? You know, being annoyed by that question or what? But it's a good question. And it's fair. We should be able to answer it. Are you safe? And am I safe? We might be talking about something a little different, but we are in the process. It is a lifelong process. There isn't just one emotional feeling, and that covers everything, because the real world is not like that. Tomorrow has its troubles. Tomorrow has its fears. We have all kinds of ways of dealing with it. When we feel deeply shamed, we dig a hole and we allow ourselves to be buried. If we're filled with fear, we're afraid to act. And that reminds me of, probably I've said it before, that one of the most profound truths that I felt, that I discovered or was taught as a young person, was no matter how good you are, you could be the best person in the whole world. I would still advise you to look both ways when you cross the street. Even if it's a one-way street, especially if you live on Appleton, because they do go the wrong way sometimes. But you know what I mean. We want sometimes God to be a magic-type figure, one, that we can act any way we want, as carelessly as we want, and nothing bad will happen. We have to learn to look both ways. I remember a girl got hit by a car down the road from where I grew up, and the parents had so much fear for their youngest child that he was petrified to cross the street until after he was probably, I think, in 11th grade, I think, before he dared cross that street. Now, that's kind of the extreme, but I want to get this point across. That to be fearless doesn't mean you're careless. To be without fear is that you understand that in life, there are some dangers. Things that can hurt you. Things that can bring you down but you don't dig a hole and hide. You learn what to look for, what to avoid. Take a reasonable understanding, and you learn to cross the street. You know, thinking of that, I had to start crossing that street in third grade because I was being paid to get the papers for my uh, older brothers, so the papers would be all ready there in the garage for them to deliver. And I look back and I'm thinking of third graders now, I would be horrified to have confidence and trust that that child would look both ways each time to get those papers. But I also think that, certainly when I was a little kid, we were much more obedient and more apt to do exactly what our parents told us to do. But that is because we learned the boundaries, we knew the dangers, we understood what to fear, but it didn't overwhelm us. That life has its risks and reasonable ones. But I return again to the rescue message. Do you sometimes feel like an orphan? There are people who struggle and are alone, the widows. Guide the shepherds. Sanctify the priests, we certainly need it. Purify the deacons. 
If I feel especially sinful, do I realize that God can pardon me, that there's nothing that I can do that God cannot forgive? He said, guard the righteous. Keep those good people that give a good example on the path so that they don't disappoint us. And for our faithful departed, give them rest in your heavenly kingdom. I'm there for the distress. I'm there for the anxious. I'm there to bring those who are wandered far away. And if you are near, I will protect you. I will lift you. I will feed you. Don't stay troubled. Don't stay fearful. There is a path that we must follow. And it's motivated by the desire to be loved and to love.
by his royal blood. Through your grace and the favor of your only Son, we implore you to accept this bloodless sacrifice from our sinful hands, and through it to forgive our sins. We glorify and honor you and your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father, the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and dwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever.
Remember, O Lord, the faithful teachers who have gone to their rest in the true faith, especially Peter and Paul, Mark, Clement, Ignatian, Ignatius, Dionysus, Julius, and all those who endured suffering and persecution for the strengthening of your holy church. Remember also those who serve your holy altar and forgive their sins that they may reach your joyful dwellings. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, I have sins. Remember, O Lord, the faithful. O Lord, all those who have left this world and have gone to you, especially Edward. Lead them to your joyful dwellings and blot out all their sins. For our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant us, O God, to depart, and forgive the sins we have committed. With or without full knowledge. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us in the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and that of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be forever.
This Saturday at 11 a.m. is the funeral liturgy for uh, Morris Peters, who had passed away a while back. So this funeral will be this Saturday at 11 o'clock. Tuesday is an organization meeting for the coming of the patriarch. Uh, it's quite an honor, but we have a lot to do. So if you're able to help and make the meeting, it's Tuesday at 6 p.m. I know it's a little confusing doing the sign of peace that way. That's why I never implemented it here. But I know when the bishop and the patriarch is here, he's going to expect you all to sit down after the ikbel, yeah, after the incense, and then stay seated until uh, when I bless the three times. But someone will motion to you. Because it's hard to give the sign of peace that way. But uh, we'll do that at least until they come. If you like it that way, you enjoy having to sit a little longer than usual, I'm certainly comfortable with that. But if it's confusing, we'll just switch back, sign it, and back to the old way. And I think I have a vocation icon to give to somebody. Prayers for vocations to the priesthood and religious life in the Maronite Church. Receive this holy icon. May the Lord hear all those prayers. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I hope you have a wonderful Memorial Day. Enjoy it immensely. I uh, hope everything you, is, that gets real comes out the right color, not black, but uh, enjoy it immensely. O oh God, the Father, how can we who are unworthy thank you for your grace? For you have given us this divine gift, and have made us worthy to share in this body and blood of your only begotten Son, who saved us. We glorify and honor you in your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, you are worshipped and you are holy. Bless and forgive the priests who are the stewards of your people and of your holy church. Forgive the servants of your divine mysteries and all the faithful who have shared in this sacrifice. Care for the orphans, help the widows, assist the poor in distress, satisfy the hungry, and protect all who call upon your holy name in every place. May your name be glorified with that of your Father and of your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nurture and blessing you have received from the forgiving of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God to whom be glory forever. Amen. I leave you.